Hey, thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Solomon SK for Coffee and RPGs, where I cover the latest news, trends, and updates for the MMO and RPG gaming genre. If you're new to the channel, I really hope I could earn your subscription in today's episode. So with that being said, if you guys got your coffee ready or beverage of choice, let's go over them together. Cheers to you guys. Before we begin, and this is for all the Amazon Prime members out there, Twitch Prime adds more SNK games, including Metal Slug 2 and King of the Monsters, and this is brought to you by PCGamer.com. And some of the things that they added are, again, Metal Slug 2, as well as the SNK 40th Anniversary Collection, and all of these games will be available until the end of the year. And if you are curious, because I believe this is relatively new, you'll have to download the Amazon Games installer and go ahead and claim everything as you see here, and uh, yeah, you get to install them when you do so. And since we are already at PCGamer.com, let's go ahead and cover some of the articles from them that I found super interesting. First one here, Fantasy Star Online 2 comes to the Steam platform on August 5th, which is great news for those of you who do not want to deal with the uh, Windows Play Store. But there is a clarification that I want to mention because I gave the impression in the last episode that I did that made it sound like the new Genesis update was going to be an upgrade of Fantasy Online 2, but that isn't the case. And it says right here, Sega released a roadmap earlier this summer. It surprised everyone during the Xbox Games Showcase. However, by announcing Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis, a brand new standalone MMO that will coexist alongside Fantasy Star Online 2. So there you have it. They're actually two different games. I thought it was just an upgrade of the original, but I was completely wrong, so I do apologize. Next from PCGamer.com, Ubisoft reportedly canceled a King Arthur RPG from Dragon Age designer Mike Laidlaw. And of course, you already guessed it. It's kind of because of the scandal that's been going on within Ubisoft with the whole um, harassment charges. And I'm not really sure exactly what the algorithms will penalize my uh, uh, channel or video for, for saying certain terms. So I'll leave it at that. But it does go on to say that the team with Laidlaw as the game director envisioned a sword and sorcery style fantasy romp, but they quickly came against a big obstacle who is, I can't pronounce his name, Hass. So I can't speak French, so I do apologize. Uh, but as you can see, the name here and his dislike of fantasy, unfortunately. But Laidlaw did actually leave the company. So whatever this game could have been, we'll never know, unfortunately. Next, we'll go ahead and head on over to MassivelyOP.com for a few articles. First one here, Astelia Online patches out the summer event, improves rewards, and adds more cosmetic slots. And this isn't huge news, but something in this article resonated with me a lot. And it goes on to say that summer has come to an end well over in Astelia Online. The game's newest patch removes the summer event, so you'll need to focus on more standard game activities like farming in Avalon. And... As a Black Desert Online player, sometimes I wish that uh, the developers would do less events because sometimes you feel obligated to do these events because the rewards are so good, but at the same time, that means that you can't work on some of the things that you had planned, such as increasing your energy and knowledge, doing the uh, adventure books and the encyclopedias and, and such, and uh, yeah, something like this, maybe Black Desert Online could take a hint and be like, hey, sometimes just ease up, you know? So. Next, Shroud of the Avatar is working on a queue system for PvP. The system will let players see a list of others looking for PvP with several brackets planned to show where those players fall in different level brackets relative to their personal level. Players who elect to pick a fight with somebody 20 levels below themselves will not receive any credits, and I think that's pretty fair actually. And lastly for MassivelyOP.com, Final Fantasy XIV brings back a shark-filled Moonfire Fair around August 12th, and it goes on to read that sharks can only be faced with the power of dancing and skimpy beachwear, apparently. Yes, this year's Moonfire Fair starts up the day after the patch, and it appears to be about dealing with an infestation of sharks off the coast of La Nausea or Nausicaa. I do apologize for not being able to pronounce that. Naturally, this means rewards will include new sets of beachwear for both genders, new dancing emote, and a new piece of outdoor furnishing. Next, we'll go ahead and head on over to MMORPG.com for a few articles. First one, EverQuest 2 patch notes brings changes to Overseer. And it also says that the Heritage Hunt Weekly looks to be retired while Heritage Hunt Dailies will become available. 
Live events are being adjusted as well with mitigation of level 120 plus NPCs, seeing a reduction. Additionally, Kalid Kaladim, I believe that's how you say it, Kaladim players will be able to purchase more items from the Trinket Fest merchants despite not having tinkering skills. I will admit I have no idea what any of this stuff means, but uh, I felt it was my obligation to at least tell all the EverQuest 2 fans out there of some of the changes that's going on in case you weren't caught up. And in their next article, World of Warcraft Classic, the war on, I don't know how to pronounce that at all, so I'm just going to refer to it as AQ, has begun. And it goes on to read that players of both Horde and Alliance will need to bring supplies to either the Valley of Spirits in Olgamar or the Military Ward in Ironforge. As the war efforts commence, supplies you provide will return rewards of AQ war effort supplies, which can be used to gain reputation with your faction later. And of course, it's also going to bring along with it the 20 player raid dungeon as well as the 40 player raid dungeon as well. And in MMORPG's next article, New World, players invited for Destiny testing, starting July 30th, preview forthcoming. And despite the delay, this is pretty interesting news admittedly, and it goes on to read that Amazon Game Studios is allowing players who have pre-ordered prior to July 26th or alpha tested into a Destiny test that begins July 30th. The test is aiming to stress the servers for an upcoming New World preview. And what's also interesting to note is that the New World preview will also not be under any NDA, so anyone who wants to join will be able to speak their mind and stream their experience as well as tweet their progress to their heart's content. Next, Lord of the Rings Online provides a coupon code as a thank you gift. VIP sub time compensation news coming soon. And if you don't know what this is about, their servers have been unstable as of this past week. And it doesn't seem to be from a DDoS attack, unfortunately. I think it's everything on their end. But for all you Lord of the Rings Online fans out there, if you type in the code thank you gift in the Lord of the Rings Online store, you will be able to redeem some free stuff such as skill and slayer deed boosts, enhanced XP supply, as well as enhanced reputation supplies in Virtue Acceleration Tome. This will be redeemable through August 31st. And the executive producer of Lord of the Rings Online, Rob Sissiolini, um, <laughs> I'm terrible with names, so I do apologize. Rob, as I'll call him, said that we are planning to give our VIP players compensation for lost VIP time, but many players are also expressing their displeasure with the nature of the thank you gift, as well as the fact that even now the in-game chat system is mostly disabled, removing a large part of the social element from Lord of the Rings Online, unfortunately. Yikes. And lastly from MMORPG.com, Guild Wars 2, Jormag Rising releases, patch notes provided. And if you head on over to their main website in their official forums, which I will have a link down in the pinned comment section below, you can actually see the various changes that they've made. The main one, of course, being the Jormag Rising content, of course, but they also changed various skills for the, for example, Engineer and Mesmer. Uh, and they actually do have late notes as well towards the bottom here, which affects the Engineer and Necromancer when it comes to PvP and World vs. World. Next, we got one article from GamesRadar.com, Red Dead Online Patch Notes, a new naturalist role for animal lovers plus gameplay improvements. And if you didn't know, there was a sort of a silly protest where people dressed up as clowns and kind of went silly all over town. But it does go on to read that the latest Red Dead Online patch notes are introducing a brand new role to the game, the naturalist. If you're an animal lover, this one's for you, as you'll get a chance to work with conservationalist Harriet Davenport to hunt, track, and study creatures across the five states. The naturalist update also brings legendary animals to Red Dead Online for the first time as well. Next, we'll head on over to Gematsu.com for a couple of articles. First one here, Animal Crossing New Horizons, a second free summer update launches on July 30th, adds fireworks shows, dreaming, and island backup service. And as stated before, the fireworks show is on every Saturday in August at 7 p.m., but not really sure what 7 p.m., like, is it 
Eastern Pacific or some other time. Dreaming has also been added. You can now choose to take a nap in any bed placed in your home while dozing off. You may find yourself in a strange realm while you'll be greeted by Luna. Luna offers visits to other islands as a dream and with her help you'll be able to share your island as a dream with others as well. And lastly, Island Backup and Restoration Service. And this is a feature that automatically uploads island and user save data to the internet. If your Nintendo Switch system is lost or damaged, you may be able to recover your island paradise. But additional details can be found on the Nintendo Consumer Support page when the update goes live, so definitely check that out for more details. Next, we have Labyrinth of Galleria Coven of Dusk, which will launch on November 26th in Japan. And unfortunately, as I was reading through this article, there doesn't seem to be a release for Europe or North America, and it will launch for the PlayStation 4 and PS Vita. And honestly, I thought Sony dropped all support for the PlayStation Vita. I thought it was a completely dead system, but they're still making it. But I think this is just a big enough market in Japan, uh, as far as I can tell. I don't know if they're still continuing to support it for the European or North American markets, but there you go. And for all you old school JRPG fans out there, Disgaea RPG coming to PC this summer in Japan. And it goes on to read that pre-registration for the PC version is available now via the game's official website. Users who pre-register will receive six four-star characters as a gift. And again, this is going to be something very interesting for all you old school JRPG fans out there. Iaiden Chronicle is a Suikoden spiritual successor created by members of the original Suikoden team. But I'll get right to it. So basically, they are operating under a Kickstarter. And even though there's still 31 days to go, they've already reached over $2 million with just under 20,000 backers. And yes, that is two million in United States money. Although you'll see here towards the bottom that everything is in yen. So it is being converted for this page. And if you scroll down, you'll see a bunch of stuff that they are adding, all the characters. And obviously I have the trailer playing above me or over me, depending on how I edit this. But I have to admit, it looks very charming. It still has a look of a modern game while also still retaining that sort of old school 2D uh, look and aesthetic. So I'm, I'm actually really interested. Am I going to back it? Well, money's a little tight, unfortunately, but I'm definitely curious about where this game heads and uh, I'm looking forward to it its release. And lastly, we head on over to altchart.com for one article. Ghost of Tsushima update adds new difficulty levels. Sucker Punch Productions are not done with Ghost of Tsushima yet, and the latest update adds a new difficulty level for players who crave actual realism. And this new mode is being called Lethal Mode. But update 1.05 also adds a lower intensity combat mode, which is meant to keep the gameplay while easing up on timing. Moreover, it makes stealth an even easier affair. So they're making things easier, but they're also making things harder. So much more options for its players. And that concludes today's episode of MMO in RPG News Roundup. I do appreciate it if you made it with me so far because the watch time does help with the algorithm. I really hope I also earned your subscription in today's episode. If so, please consider hitting the subscribe button as well as the bell notification right next to it. Anyways, guys, I will finally let you guys go. I hope you guys have a blessed night and I will see you guys next time. Cheers again, everyone.